Mommy, Jesus spoke to me last night about his word and he's coming again. And these letters is on the website, you can see it there, which is going to be very, very, very soon. Do you know that, Mommy? And then he would tell about the bride. Jesus wants to come and fetch his bride, but his bride is not ready. He looked at me and said, don't tell me you don't know. I said, no, I'm not sure. He says there's a wedding feast inside and everybody's not ready. Yeah. And my aunt, who had died about seven years previously to that, walked up and she was all excited. She said, Bruce, it is so exciting. And I said, what's so exciting? She said, the preparation for the marriage supper of the Lamb is almost complete. And heaven is abuzz with this news and excited because it's the culmination, the completion. And she said, and not only that, many individuals are visiting heaven from earth right now to go back with the testimony that people should be prepared because he's coming back shortly. There were no angels preparing it. It was all ready. Everything was ready. The Lord turned to me and said, everything is now ready. Do you know what this is? I said, no, sir, I don't know what is this. He said, this is the, basically, he said, these are prepared for the 144,000 that are soon of your people from the 12 tribes. This is a special banquet that is prepared for them when they finish their work. But he said, you must tell my people that I'm coming soon. All is now ready. And he actually said to me, he said, all of heaven is on its feet. He says, we are ready to come. And I am to tell the story that Jesus is coming soon. He told me before he sent me back that I would come back, and when I did, I had to tell his people to get ready. These are the words of the Lord. He said, Prepare yourselves and get ready because I am coming back soon at a time when people don't think I am coming back. I am coming back. He is coming after his sons and his daughters, and he is coming after his servants. He is coming after all of us that we might go with him to that place called heaven. Are you ready? Are you really ready? December 2006, Jesus showed me rapture in the vision. When I was praying, I suddenly saw a blue sky. Then I saw people down on the land in small silhouette. Suddenly clouds started to rise up here and there simultaneously. At first, I was bewildered at the sight and soon realized its rapture. I looked at the scene in surprise, joy, and deep emotion. I saw thousands of people disappearing. Pregnant women had their pregnancy disappear, and they looked like they had gone crazy screaming. Children had disappeared from all over. Many people were running from here to there, screaming, This can't be, this can't be. What's happening? After the rapture observed enormous traffic with thousands of people. He told me, Daughter. Look, this is how everything will happen. I then saw people running from one place to another, shouting, Christ came, Christ came. When Jesus observed how people were left behind, he began to weep and said, Daughter, I will go to earth as it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. But not everyone will go with the Lord, only those who are doing His will and living a holy life. Only 20% will be caught up to be with Jesus, this is only for true Christians. This why His Word says, many are called, but few are chosen in Matthew 22. Lord, who are these angels? The Lord answered, The seven bowls that the angels hold are filled with the wrath of God. They will soon be poured out, and when the trumpets sound, my church, those Christians who live according to the will of my Father, will be caught up. They will no longer be on earth during the great tribulation. Before the Antichrist manifests himself, this man of sin, my church will hear the last trumpet sound, and they will meet me in the air. Jesus showed me how his church, the true believers, will be caught up. I saw this in vision, thousands of people disappearing. This happened worldwide, and TV and radio gave the news of the disappearance. Newspapers with big headlines in red also brought out the news. The Lord told me, 
the news will soon happen. If the judgments of my Father have not yet come upon the earth, it's because of the faithful Christians who really love me. I've never seen someone with such a compulsion, like in an urgency in your voice. Why? Because there's an unction within inside of me that I don't have much time. You don't have much time. We don't have much time. And I must preach it. And I felt that these words, something was going to come out of my mouth. I tried to hold myself back, and I couldn't. And I remember yelling out loud, revealing the condition of my heart when I cried out, No! We're not ready! One of the messages was, well, he a couple of months ago, he woke me, uh, he wrote this morning, he said to me, Mommy, Jesus spoke to me last night about his word and his coming again. And these letters is on the website, you can see it there, which is going to be very, very, very soon. Do you know that, Mommy? And then he would tell about the bride. Jesus wants to come and fetch his bride, but his bride is not ready. Tell me about, because this is amazing, when he was weeping one day about the golden bridge. Yes. He can't cry like he normally cries. He would just make noises. And he was laying his head on his arms and crying. And I said, why are you crying? He says, in heaven there's a golden bridge. And after the bridge there's a huge door with poles around it. He says, but there's people standing outside and they're crying. I said, why are they crying? He says, they can't go in. And I said, into what? He looked at me and said, don't tell me you don't know. I said, no, I'm not sure. He says, there's a wedding feast inside and everybody's not ready. So every day you will journal a whole page. That next morning, he only did this. He wrote Matthew 25 and he left for school. And he shouldn't have not, he should have not even known what was in Matthew 25. Well, I didn't. <laughs> so what is, what, you read it immediately. Yes, I ran to my Bible and I read it and it was about the ten virgins. Five wise, five, five foolish. Five is wise and five foolish. Five is ready and five is not. And I tell you, this is the bride today. We're all in church. But Jesus did not come to give us religion. He came for an intimate, passionate love relationship with a king. Jesus assured me after we arrived in heaven during the early hours of February 29th. The only ones who can come here are the ones whose hearts are as pure as the water. Many people think I will never come for them, but I tell you, I am coming sooner than they think. When he said this, the tone of his voice changed. He seemed to be almost angry, or at least I sensed a great urgency in his words. It was a warning. It was a message I had to share and share now. The end times are truly upon us. Jesus is coming soon. He went on to remind me. I am telling you all this and showing you these things so you can tell the world. Then he reiterated the importance of all these experiences by saying, I know that a lot of my children don't think I will come back for them for a long time. Some even think I will never come back for them. But I want you to tell them that my kingdom is ready for those who are ready and waiting for me. I am coming very soon. Lord, will all the Christians go with you when you come for us? I am going to show you something, the Lord answered instantly. I want you to remember all that you see. I want the whole world to know what is going to happen soon. I know many Christians do not believe what my prophets are telling them. That is why I am showing this to you. The air was filled with white moving objects. As the vision clarified, I saw people wearing white robes flying through the air. People were popping out of the earth everywhere and flying up into the air. The sky was literally filled with flying people, like birds in migration. I had heard the rapture described before, but I had never imagined what an amazing spectacle it would be. I wondered what those who do not know Jesus would think when they observe such a scene. I was shocked and excited, but I'm sure they will be terrified. This was the biggest surprise the Lord had ever shown me. It was the most awe-inspiring thing I'd ever seen human beings flying through the air like birds. 
they soared upward with rocket-like speed. Some seemed to be soaring like kites in the wind on a clear, beautiful day. I saw my one-year-old granddaughter. She was wearing a white robe, and her hair had grown to shoulder length. She looked pretty grown up. At first, I saw her at her house in normal clothing. Then suddenly, she was wearing a white robe and flying through the air. I was dumbfounded by the vision. It certainly seemed to confirm that the Lord would be returning in the very near future. Then I saw my daughter's ten-month-old daughter. She does not have much hair right now, but in the vision her hair was down to her shoulders, and like my other granddaughter, she was flying through the air. I felt the Lord had a good reason for showing the children to me. First, I'm sure he wanted me to know that they will be with God in heaven to enjoy all eternity with Jesus. Second, I knew he wanted me to see how old they would be when he returns. It is sooner than most people think. The joyous vision changed. I saw the people who did not ascend with the others. Places on earth had been disrupted. Some had been turned upside down. It was noisy everywhere, and people were in an obvious state of panic. Terror was ridden on every face. People were running wildly. Total pandemonium reigned. It seemed as if each person was searching for someone or something that they could not find. I began to cry like a little child as I watched people running down the streets. They were screaming and yelling. Some were trying to throw what few belongings they possessed into vehicles such as cars and boats. Thousands of boats were on the ocean. People were trying to escape. Many men in uniforms were storming houses, ransacking them and taking the belongings they found. I noticed one family of four or five lying on the floor of a house. Most of them were on their stomach and a pool of blood covered the floor. Hundreds of people were fleeing on foot to the mountains. As they did, the uniformed guards fired guns at them, and several fell. Those nearest the guards were beaten with clubs and sticks. I saw people destroying churches. A man threw a rock at a beautiful stained-glass window that showed Jesus with his lambs. The window shattered and glass flew in all directions. I screamed more loudly. One woman who appeared to be looking for a lost child was running through her house, shouting in panic and fear. She kept calling her child's name as she jumped up and down in total frustration and desperation. I wanted to help her, but there was nothing I could do. I cried and cried for her and for all the others. Then I saw a family I know personally. The father ran into his house and rushed from room to room calling the names of his wife and children. He found one member of his family and they sat huddled in a corner of a room. I know who they are, but I am not at liberty to mention their names in this book. The vision eventually vanished and I continued to cry. The Lord wiped my tears. Daughter, he said, I must show you these things so you can tell the whole world what is going to happen. I love all my children, and I want them to realize I am coming for them soon. But I cannot bring those who don't live according to my word, because they are not ready for me. Many Christians will be surprised when the end times come. What you just saw is only a small part of what will happen very soon. It will be much worse than you can possibly imagine for those who do not know me. That is why I want all my children to be able to come with me to my kingdom. Daughter, I have shown you part of the kingdom and the things that are going to happen in this world because the time is short. I will return soon. You have seen what is going to happen on earth in the very near future. I am ready for my children, but so many of my children do not really believe, and they are living for worldly things. 
I love all of them and want to bring all of them to heaven with me, but I cannot take those who are not ready for me. Those who come to my kingdom must be pure-hearted and obedient. My coming for my people is so near. I try to save as many souls as I can, no matter what it takes. Satan knows this, and he is trying to destroy as many souls as he can before they are saved. People should realize why so many people are dying now. Every church must cast out the devil continually by prayer. My churches have been too comfortable. I am very dissatisfied with many of them. I want the whole world to know that I am a fearsome God. I love my children, and that is why I died for them. I must be first in everyone's life. Everyone needs to repent and be humble before me. There will be a great distraction in this world continually until I come for my people. That day is sooner than they expect. David was not a believer in the Messiah. David did not know the Bible, but one night when you were 17, yes, sir. you had a vision, and it's so interesting to me, uh, this was not just one vision. He then had a second one of the same thing after he became a believer in the Messiah. It's as if God knew David's purpose before David knew God. Tell me what happened. Well, my sister asked me to babysit her children why she wanted to go skating, and I did, and I put the kids to bed. And I had a portable radio, and I was trying to turn it on to try to get a station. All of a sudden, I heard a woman scream. And it's not like it was behind the house or in front of the house. It was just like in the air. So as I went to go towards the window, I stopped and I said, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. If I go towards that window, I'm going to see something that I don't want to see. But see it, I was compelled to go. And so I pulled back the curtains. It was on the second story. And I looked down and I didn't see anything. I was like, there's nothing wrong. And then when my eyes caught the stars in the heavens, all of a sudden, I'm just like a, a big movie screen and color. The moon appeared, and it's like someone took an ice pick and poked the moon. Then blood began to ooze out of the moon. And then all the stars in the heaven begin to fall all at once. And then the sky itself began to roll up as a scroll. And it was happening simultaneously. The moon turned the blood. The stars fall from the heaven. The sky rolled up as a scroll, and all of a sudden, I seen a woman with long black hair. She was beholding what was happening, coming upon the earth, and she began to take her fingernails and dig in her face and scream and holler. Then I seen hundreds of people running, thousands of people running, and the horror on their faces, and what God allowed me to sense what they were feeling, total helplessness total terror and all of a sudden the vision disappeared and I fell to the ground and I was trembling and shaking I was like oh my god what did I see Sid I didn't know anything about visions at the time and I was like what should I do I said maybe I get the Bible get the Bible and I was walking through the house I said please please Lord don't let me see nothing else please please don't I thought something was gonna come again I said please and I got the Bible and I just opened it up and I went to Revelations the sixth chapter beginning at the 12th verse and it began to tell about the day of the Lord and the moon turning to blood and I was like, oh God I began to look at that and I said Lord Jesus look at what's happening I seen this with my eyes and all of a sudden I called my uncle Eddie he was a preacher and I say I told him what happened he said son God just showed you a vision I said you mean to tell me I'm not going crazy he said no you're not going crazy he said God gave you an open vision when you're gonna say yes to Jesus when you're gonna serve the Lord he's called you to be a preacher of the gospel and I said oh I don't know if I can live saved I don't know if I can do it and from that day I knew within myself there's something I must do for God but I am going to take you to February 2012 what happened to you well, I got up to go use the restroom, and as I was coming back and I was getting back in the bed, it's like someone grabbed me by the arm and <clears throat> shook me. Next thing I know, I'm catapulted into an open vision, and I'm hovering about 200 feet over the earth, and I can see all the beautiful skies and the sun and all the happiness, people going to and fro in the land, mothers with their children going into the grocery stores, people pumping gas, businessmen with their ties and briefcakes going into the buildings, and all of a sudden, a thick darkness and clouds start appearing upon the earth. And then, 
all of a sudden there was a sound from heaven, a sound that I have never heard before in all my born days. It was like seven claps of thunder, other than to one. The sound was so deafening, not only did it pierce the ears of all mankind, but it began to pierce their skeleton that when they heard it, their bodies began to shake and quake. And this sound was so deafening, people began to scream. Then all of a sudden, like someone took a razor blade and split the heavens. Then here come the Son of God with all his bands of angels and all his glory. Oh, see it in the colors were glorious, splendid, magnificent, glorious, the blues, the golds, the greens. I never seen such colors like this and he was coming speedily on the earth then people begin to urinate on themselves and scream and then one man say no 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 wait 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 I thought I had time I thought I had time but too late all time it ran out for all mankind another man he was like an Indian guy real short he began to say no 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 this is a dream this is a dream I'm gonna wake up but Sid he couldn't wake up because he was already woke then I heard a voice from heaven saying, This is the day of the Lord. It has come. And I came out of the vision, trembling on the floor, and I'm shaking and quaking within myself. And I begin to pray for me. I didn't pray for my mother, my wife, my children. I begin to intercede for me because God allowed me to see such terror. Terror, we know God is love and he's mercy and he's long-suffering, he's gentle and he's kind. But see, there's another part of God that mankind has not been introduced to, and that's the terror of the Lord. Such terror, such horror, and I begin to repent over my own life. Lord, save me. God, forgive me. Because he allowed me to sense what everyone was feeling and I begin to repent because I say, God, I want to be pleasing to you, Lord. If I have hurt you or, 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 or come against you in any shape, form, or another, please forgive me, Lord. Lord, please allow me to be counted worthy to go back with you. I have seen the day of the Lord. Then the Lord spoke to me, say, I charge you now to warn all mankind. And he said it like this, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Whether they will believe you or not, give them warning from you whether they receive you or not give them warning from you for the day of the Lord is at hand God is telling many people from even that are not believers in the Messiah the same thing for instance Orthodox Jews in Israel are being told that we are in the footsteps of the coming of the Messiah in other words, they know something is up in the air. About the same time that David had that dream, I had a dream. And in my dream, it, you know, I wasn't even, David, I wasn't even thinking about this. It didn't cross my radar. If someone had said to me, uh, the Lord is coming back soon, I would have said, yes, I believe that. But, you know, I'm 73. In my heart of hearts, I'm not sure I really believe that. I mean, you're supposed to say he's coming back soon. You're supposed to live like he's coming back soon. But there just seems to be so much that has to be done. <laughs> but it's not up to my peanut brain. It's up to God. And this is what God showed me in the dream. He said to me three times, I'm coming back soon. I'm coming back soon. I'm coming back soon. David, between you and me, what did you believe in your heart about the Lord's return? I mean, between the two of us. <clears throat> well, uh, I didn't think it was close. I mean, according to all the scriptures and the revelation teachers and the scholars, I know it was going to come, but I wasn't sure. But now I'm absolutely sure that he's coming at an hour and at a time when man least expected. What should someone do that's just heard this message and believes it's from God? Set their house in order. Whatever they need to do for God, they must do quickly. If they need to ask for forgiveness, they better do it quickly. If they need to go to their mother, father, sister, brother, ask for forgiveness, they need to go get things straight before it's everlasting too late. Because the terror of the Lord is like something I've never seen in my entire life. Okay, let me take you. I know you're living a holy life. Mm -hmm. I know that you love God. 
right after that open vision, what did you do? I began to repent and cry out to God. But you repented. I know you. You repented way before a vision like that. Not like this one. Not like this one. Because he made it so real to me. It was so real. And it was so overpowering and overtaking that men and women could not even think straight when it happened. And he came so suddenly, just like he said he would. Why is there so much urgency in you giving this message? I, I, I mean, I've never seen someone with such a compulsion, like in an urgency in your voice. Why? Because there's an unction with inside of me that I don't have much time. You don't have much time. We don't have much time. And I must preach it. And I must proclaim it just as Noah did for 120 years that it was going to rain. But they turned a deaf ear to Noah. They didn't believe that man of God. But the Bible say, God said unto Noah, come you and your family into the ark. For he opened up the windows of heaven. And the windows of heaven poured out the water upon the land. And everything that breathed through nostrils died. Just like God said he would. Angelica Zambrano visited to heaven for 23 hours. At the time of coming back. She saw a vision of the rapture. Many Christians were left behind. Jesus told her many times that he is coming for the holy people. It is time to repent our sins daily. Turn away from sins. Love Jesus with all your heart. We walked to a place with a giant screen, and I saw people in it. I could observe the whole world. Then suddenly I saw thousands of people disappearing. Pregnant women had their pregnancy disappear, and they looked like they had gone crazy screaming. Children had disappeared from all over. Many people were running from here to there, screaming, This can't be, this can't be. What's happening? I saw those who had known the Lord, but were left behind. They were saying that Christ had come, the rapture happened. They screamed and wanted to kill themselves, but they couldn't. The Lord told me, Daughter, in those days, death will flee. Daughter, in those days the Holy Spirit will no longer be on earth. There were accidents but I didn't see a single dead person. All of them were alive, although injured. After the rapture observed enormous traffic with thousands of people. He told me, Daughter, look, this is how everything will happen. I then saw people running from one place to another, shouting, Christ came. Christ came. They would plead, Lord, forgive me, forgive me, take me with you. But sadly the Lord said, It will be too late. The time to repent is now. Daughter, go tell humanity to seek me, for during that time there will no longer be opportunity. Daughter, it will be too late for all of those that stay behind. When Jesus observed how people were left behind, he began to weep and said, Daughter, I will go to earth as it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. But not everyone will go with the Lord only those who are doing his will and living a holy life. For the Lord told me, Only those that are holy will enter the kingdom of heaven, no one knows, neither the day nor the hour in which I will go for my holy people, not even the angels know it. On the screen I saw people running around. Magazines and TV news said that Christ had come. The screen closed, and Jesus finished by saying, I will go for the holy people. This was all he showed me. Many will not believe you, many will believe you, but I am your faithful witness. I am with you. I will never leave you. The Lord told me, Daughter, in those days the Holy Spirit will no longer be on earth. In those days, he will no longer be on earth. And I saw enormous traffic, with accidents. Many people wanted to kill themselves, but Jesus said, They shall seek death, but death shall flee from humanity. Death will no longer be during that time. I saw people watching TV and magazines that read, Thousands and thousands have disappeared. Many already knew that Christ had come for his holy people. Those who knew the Lord, but were left behind, went crying through the streets, wanting to kill themselves, 
but they could not do anything. While in heaven, Jesus said, I will come for a holy people and I will come soon for my church. But recently, the Lord told me, Daughter, I take pleasure in what you are doing, that you are fulfilling what I have given you, but do not tell my people that I am coming soon. Tell my people that I am coming right away. Again the Lord said, Tell my people that I am coming right away and that I am coming for the holy people. Tell my people that only the holy ones, only the holy ones will see me. And do not be silent. Keep on declaring what I have told you. Angelica will now testify her experience. This is when angels took her to a heavenly viewpoint, and showed her the current condition of the church. From a heavenly viewpoint an angel said, Look, you are seeing the earth. Look at the churches and congregations of the earth. This church has 20,000 members. There is another church with 10,000 members. This other church has 1,000. But, there are very few people in these churches that are actually the true church. Are you seeing? Yes, I answered. The angel said. I must tell you what my father wants me to tell you. The archangel Michael was the one speaking to me. Michael said, Look at the earth. The churches are filled with sin. There is very much sin in the churches. Many of the people are spiritually dead. I was shown that 80% of the evangelical Christian church on earth will be left behind. My God! They will be left behind because they are cold. Because they don't seek God's presence. Because of their sin. Because they are discouraged. Only 20% will be caught up to be with Jesus. This is only for true Christians. This why his word says, many are called, but few are chosen in Matthew 22. We were all called, but we not only must be called, we must also be chosen. Let me explain what takes place inside many of the churches. There is very much religion. There is no loyalty to the word of God. Inside church, brothers and sisters happily praise the Lord. They rejoice, they dance and they speak in tongues. But when they get home they are completely different. They act like the devil himself. This is what takes place. People go home and speak things that hurt God's heart. At home you don't pray, read God's word or seek his presence. God does not want any of us to be left behind. It hurts me that 80% of church congregants are not ready for the Lord's return. Do you know why? because few of the churches truly demonstrate the true love of Jesus. There were angels around when Jesus spoke to me. The angels were silent, the Lord said, Daughter, my heart breaks to see how many people are discouraged, to see how many people have backslid. Tell my people to return to ancient paths, to the first love. All of us have been seeking God diligently during this 21-day fast. After this we can't look back at the past, we must press forward. The Lord promised us in His Word, He will be with us. Don't worry about the trials to come in the future. You can't imagine the trials. I have endured. Actually, all of us endure together. Although I don't know your trial, it doesn't really matter. We must press forward because only the courageous will enter in His presence. When you return to your congregations you must encourage the brethren. We are one family in Christ. You must encourage them to seek God. Tell them to seek God. Reject hypocrisy. Listen to what the Lord told me. He said, Do you know which commandment my church has forgotten? Someone think it is love. Others think it's faith. The forgotten commandment within the church is holiness. My word says, Be holy for I am holy. This is what the Lord said. We have to be holy inside and outside. We must have a pure heart. A clean heart that is filled with His presence. A heart filled with His love. A heart filled with God. What I have revealed to you, you must speak. It's necessary. It's necessary, so the pastors will return to me. So the pastors won't condemn their congregations, because the churches will be in the condition of their pastors. This is why I allowed this. I will do great things. My daughter, don't fail me. Everything I have revealed to you, you must speak. You must tell the world of everything I have shown you, the whole world, because you will go to nations. You will go to nations preaching of what I have shown you. It's necessary. 
It is I who speaks, believe my servant. She is the daughter of my eyes. With the humility she has, I will use her. I took her so she could see the message I have for the churches. This message is for pastors. Churches will follow their pastor's example. There are many churches, but few are chosen. On the, fir um, on the 2nd of August, the visit was from 9.15 to 12, 12, 10, 12. And as usual, the Lord came to me and said, Sarah, I must speak with you. He took my hand and we flew to heaven. And once changed, the Lord told me he needed to show me something. He led me to a huge TV again and we sat down and I sensed that the Lord had gone back to his godliness as God. And in the TV there was chaos. People were running, everyone screaming. And that it was some some people were even trying to hide, but it was impossible. You could not hide from that. You just a big no, because everywhere you tried to hide the Lord, it was all open to the Lord. And the, I heard the Lord say to me, He said, This daughter is judgment day, the day I will return for my children. I will come like a thief. Nobody knows the date, day, minute, or second. Tell my children to repent and come back to me so that they can enjoy the city that I built for them. For I, the Lord, is coming back soon. It's coming back very soon, sooner than you all think. And when the Lord says this, is he is warning us. The Father, our Father as himself is warning us. Like you've read it in the Bible, but he is warning us, like he's telling us that I am coming soon. You don't, No one knows the day the Lord is coming back. No one knows the date, time, or day, or even year he's coming back. But when he, the words that you have, you must concentrate very clearly on when the, on the words that the Lord say. He said, I'm coming back very soon, sooner than you all think. And when he said this, I kind of got frightened myself because I was like, this could mean he could come back tomorrow. He could come back the day after. And this, uh, this, like, this is unlike, take this as an urgent message to children of God out there. Please, please, please. If it's now that you're, if you're watching me right now, this moment, just take a minute. Just pause, stop everything you're doing. Just take a minute to just repent. Because you don't know the time God's coming back. He could come back any minute from them. You can, he could come back within the next five minutes. And if he catches you out, or out of God and that you haven't been able to repent, you're going to end up in hell for something so small, so tiny. So just take time to repent. Just please 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 just repent your heart please just i'm begging you repent your heart so that you are able to end up in heaven on the last day you move in prophecy has god told you things about uh what will be happening shortly in the united states or israel that you can share well i know that israel the lord has been speaking to me is going to have one of the greatest moves of god they've ever had because God is going to answer prayer. The Jew and Gentile are going to come together like you spoke about in your book. Ezekiel 47 talks about a double river. And when the two come together, there's life that goes wherever that double river goes. And the double river is the Jew and Gentile, one new man, one in Messiah. And Sid, it talks about in the book of Ezekiel that every person will be healed. God is going to answer prayer. There's going to be a great move of God in, in Jerusalem. There's going to be a lot of disasters in a lot of uh, cities and areas, like I mentioned to you the other day, California and different ones. But at the same time, it will be like when Azusa Street was poured out in California. They had the worst earthquake they have ever had up in San Francisco. So I, I wish it didn't take tragedy to bring people to the Lord. But this harvest has got to come in, Sid, as well as you know. The Jew and the Gentiles have got to meet together. All denominations have got to come together for this harvest to come in. And the Lord is, says it's going to come before he comes back. So the disaster will be, bring the greatest harvest we've ever had. Believe God. Believe God and walk with God. And remember... There is a day that he's going to split those clouds and come back, and God wants you to be ready. Do, do you think it'll, did he tell you whether it would be in your lifetime, or you don't know? Well, I don't know, but he just told me to work quickly. He walked in my room a, f a few months back and said, work quickly, Loretta, because I will come soon. Every day, I hear the audible voice of God in some manner. Every day, I get to see the angels of God, and I have seen Jesus on numerous occasions. In revival meetings, the angels are visible to me. The cloud of glory 
is visible to me. The sickness and diseases in people's bodies are visible to me. The demons that afflict them are visible to me. The glory that comes upon them when God heals them is also visible to me. God has truly poured out upon me a prophetic ministry of signs and wonders and miracles. And I am to tell the story that Jesus is coming soon. He told me before he sent me back that I would come back. And when I did, I had to tell his people to get ready. These are the words of the Lord. He said, Prepare yourselves and get ready because I am coming back soon at a time when people don't think I am coming back. I am coming back. He is coming after his sons and his daughters, and he is coming after his servants. He is coming after all of us that we might go with him to that place called heaven. Are you ready? Are you really ready? On May 8th, 2005, he's minding his own business, sleeping. What happened? And then all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, my spirit begins to rise up out of my body. And at first, I was, I was just like hovering, hanging over the bed. I could see my physical body laying there. I could see my wife laying next to me. And I thought to myself, what in the world is going on? I thought I had passed away. That thought went through my mind. Mm -hmm. Then all I, of I could understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I, I feel these two massive arms. And I knew it was an angel. And I could see myself. I was, he was cradling me holding me in between his two arms. And the moment I saw that, we begin to rise. And I remember looking at the roof and I ducked my head because I thought I was gonna hit my head against the roof. And to my surprise, we go right through the roof of the house. And so in, that's when I thought, oh Lord, I passed away and I began to pray for my wife, my kids. <laughs> so for a brief moment, my mind and my thoughts, my emotions were on earthly matters. And then all of a sudden, from one instant to another instinct, in a moment, my emotions were flooded with com this incredible joy, joy I had never felt before because I knew that I was about to go see Jesus, the Son of God. And so I remember just closing my eyes and thinking to myself, I'm ready. And then we shoot through the atmosphere, going through the clouds. And then in an instant, we, I find myself in this big open expanse of a place. So for lack of a better word, a large opening, a room. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any buildings. I didn't see any uh, angels. I didn't see anybody. I just saw in the, nat uh, I, in the natural, I'm colorblind. So I saw these incredible colors, massive, beautiful colors. And the unique thing about that, Sid, was the colors were actually breathing. There was life. Like if, the, like if, like if there was, it was lungs, it was expanding and you know, inhaling. And I could see the colors actually breathe and full uh, of life. You know, I, I have heard reports like this before. Everything is alive in heaven. I have heard that the grass is even alive. It's like we, we haven't even experienced life on this dead earth until we have the life of God inside of us. But how would you like to be in a place where everything is alive? No death! I like it. <laughs> yes. And so from that, from, that, from that room, all of a sudden, in an instant, I was back in, into this other room. And in this room, I saw two figures, and they were standing at an angle like this. Um, I was maybe from here to the camera, maybe 10 feet, um, and then I heard a voice, and the voice said, to you it's been granted to stand here and listen. Because I immediately recognized it was a father and the son. At first I didn't know who, who that was, but when I, as I got a little closer, then I heard the voice. I recognized it was Jesus and the Father, and they were having a conversation. And so when I heard the voice that told me, you've been granted permission to stand here and listen, I, I remember turning my ear this way to listen to their conversation, and to my surprise, they were talking about the end times. I remember hearing clearly that they were, they were talked about the difficult hour that lay ahead, and how the church would uh, be given the opportunity to be purged, and the opportunity to really experience the greatness of what still lays ahead, the greatest outpouring of the Spirit of God. But clearly, um, the way the download that I was receiving as I heard all that reminded me very much of this, the readings that, I, you know, that you do on an annual basis as a, as a regular Christian on the end times, the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel. So I remember listening to this conversation and I was brought to my, brought to my memory was all the uh, judgments that are coming based upon the book of Revelation and also Joel, the book of Daniel. And, um, but I, 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 I received and I felt like this is an hour, an opportunity for the church to be stronger 
and to understand the importance to be ready and alert because my sense is for the most part the body of Christ for the most part is not prepared for what is about to take place. Okay, do you think you'll be alive when all this happens? I firmly believe that I will be alive. I believe that my eyes will physically see the coming of the Lord. And when you study church history, those who remained on fire for the Lord, even the Apostle Paul and Peter, they believed in their day, in their hour, that they would see the coming of the Messiah, the coming of the Lord. And I feel like the church must understand once again end time eschatology. We must be uh, students, we must understand the signs, the seasons, the hour that we're living in so that we can live an urgent life. And when we, under, when we have that understanding of sense of urgency, our hearts, our lives are completely given to the Lord. I feel like there's a greater surrender as a result of understanding the hour that we're living in. Okay, but then the most terrifying thing that ever happened to Carlos happened to him in heaven. What happened? Well, what happened was they went from discussing about the urgency of the hour, they went to discussing about the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit, greatest miracles, not all gloom and doom, there's great hope. But then the hope culminates in this incredible manifestation that I believe the Spirit of God is doing right now, and that is this. I heard the Father say to Jesus, it's time, son, go get your bride. What did that mean to you? At, at first, I was shocked and stunned, but I had this download and understanding of revelation that I, as part of the church of Christ, in that moment, I was not prepared, and I was not ready to really see him come back. Even though we may have the right confession, we may have the right lingo, we may say the right words, but in reality, for the most part, many of us in the church, including myself at that time, I was not ready was not prepared. And so when those words came out of the Father to the Son, I remember this, it was the most horrible fear. It was, I, I call it the terror of the Lord. The most horrible fear and terror that ever I had ever felt. It was like those words rolled out of his mouth like a ball, a ball of fire. And I remember those words just rolling towards me and I knew it was gonna hit my midsection. And it, when it hit my, my, in my, my body, I remember trembling violently and I couldn't contain myself. And I felt that these words, something was gonna come out of my mouth. I tried to hold myself back and I couldn't. And I remember yelling out loud, revealing the condition of my heart when I cried out, no, we're, we're not ready. ready. That's what I did. I raised my fists you up like this. You weren't even thinking this. I wasn't it came even out thinking. from your innermost. This, if this man is not ready, <laughs> what about us? I'll tell you what. He was downloaded from heaven how to be ready. Now, when he says ready, he doesn't mean repenting of sins. He repented of his sins. He doesn't mean having the Messiah live inside of him. The Messiah lives inside of him. When he said, I'm not ready, he meant, I am not prepared to be involved in the next, yes. in the greatest, and perhaps the last move of the presence of God, of the mercy of God on planet Earth. And he was commissioned on what he had to do to be ready and what you have to do to be ready. Why were you not ready? So I come out of this encounter and I find myself back in my physical body. I'm on the floor weeping, totally distraught and disturbed by the encounter. Ready. And those words haunted me. It said for two hours, I laid there weeping and saying, haunted by those words, no, no, we're not ready. No, we're not ready. So I asked the Lord, Lord, why am I not ready? Was I talking about myself, the ministry, my family, the church in general? And after two hours, I heard the Holy Spirit say this to me. He says, son, if I took you home right now, you are ready to meet me for eternity. But then he said this, but in the condition that your heart is in right now, you are not ready for the next great move of the Holy but, but Spirit. Wait a second now. Did you see miracles in your congregation? Absolutely. Did you see people coming to know the Messiah? Absolutely. Were you growing? Absolutely. Did you have financial problems? Not at all. And he wasn't ready. And so here's what the Lord re began to reveal to my heart. He began to reveal to my heart that I had become a professional minister. In other words, um, I had become so, grown so comfortable in my calling that the ministry was routine. I mean, you can get up behind a platform and, you know, my heart was still for the Lord. I don't, you know, don't get me wrong, I still love the Lord. But in other words, my heart was no longer on the edge, a prophetic edge. And the Holy Spirit began to reveal to me, he says, son, you've left your first love. 
it reminded me of the church of Ephesus in Revelations 2, where the Spirit of the Lord rebuked the church for leaving her first love, although they had great ministry, they had great doctrine, great miracles, but they left their first love. And the Spirit of God began to reveal to me, son, because you've left your first love, therefore there's a lack of humility. And the lack of humility, which I believe is a major component that, that we have to have restored in the preachers of America, the preachers of the Western Church, the preachers in the body of Christ, so that because it, the true spirit of humility is a, is a pure dependence upon God, where there is no glory for man. There is, I like that. There is, there is no glory for the church, or the, in, in a specific local church. There is no glory for a ministry, but he gets all the glory. And the, the true spirit of humility is that what John the Baptist said, I must decrease, but he must increase. And so I really believe this is an area that the spirit of God is honing in on so that the church can understand if we truly are humble, he will exalt us. And there's many that are watching right now by television uh, that the Holy Spirit is, I, I saw earlier the Spirit of God almost like take his hand and, and, and turn a spigot. And I saw a fresh release of affections. I saw a fresh release of love. And those of you that are watching right now, just, just be sensitive and ask the Lord. Say, Lord, would you please open up the, the portal of my heart? Open up the portal of my soul because the Lord wants to download and love and affect. He wants you to feel how much he feels about you. And, there's, and the reason why many of us are stuck, the many, we're not progressing. We feel like we don't feel the presence of the Lord or we're not happy. I mean, some of the saddest Christians are, 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 are Christians who are bored. And they're bored because they don't fully realize how God feels about them. And so for those of you that are watching right now, I just, just say in Jesus' name, receive that fresh turning of the affections of God for your life, even right now in Jesus' name. And so I just felt from the Lord that, that the Spirit of God was asking me to focus on two things. Son, become more dependent upon me. Seek my face. And then number two, return to your first love. We need to have every believer understand, wait a second, it's not just the pastor. It's not just the evangelist. I'm called as an individual to return back to minister to the Lord. And that's what I believe the Lord is saying. Return back to your first love. The greatest commandment is not a suggestion. It's a commandment. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. And when you look at the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, it's about one thing, Sid. You ready? It's about a wedding. History began in Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3 with Adam and Eve. What's that about? Man and, one becoming, man and woman becoming one. That's the wedding. First miracle of Jesus, is of his ministry. Where? John chapter 2 at the, at the wedding of Cana in Galilee. And then the, one of the greatest apostles, if not the greatest apostle, was Paul. And he has his revelation of the mystery. You know about the mystery, the Jew and Gentile becoming one. But he takes it further, and the Lord reveals to him, this mystery I'm talking about is the heart of God and the plan of God coming to pass from all of eternity, which is what? God and man becoming one. And he uses the picture of a husband and a wife. He says, I speak to you a mystery, but I'm speaking concerning Christ and the church. And then we have Revelation chapter 22 and verse, 20, verse 17. One of the last statements that the Spirit of God says about the end times is this, and the Spirit and the bride say come. I believe the greatest identity that's about to be released to the body of Christ. We, we, we know what it is to be a child of God. We know what it is to be a son of God. And many of us know what it is to be a friend of God. But the greatest revelation and the greatest identity, the most intimate relationship on earth is that between a man and a woman, a husband and a wife. And the Spirit of God is releasing this revelation that Christ is the bridegroom and the church is the bride. Hello, Sid Roth here with Bruce Allen. Bruce, tell me about the time, and I'm sure this has happened many times, but you were caught up into heaven and you saw someone you knew. Yeah, Sid, that was unusual. I was in a season of prayer and just worshiping God and suddenly I was in heaven, paradise. And there was great activity going on, like bustling. I don't know how to describe that. Almost like Christmas in a mall. And all of a sudden, uh, almost like all the activity is going on because the holiday or the events about ready to happen, you have to get everything in yeah. place. So there's a lot of activity going on. Much in activity. Heaven. Yeah. And my aunt, who had died about seven years previously to that, walked up, and she was all excited. She said, "Bruce, it is so exciting." And I said, "What's so exciting?" She said, "The preparation for the marriage supper of the Lamb is almost complete." And heaven is abuzz with this news and excited. 
because it's the culmination, the completion. And she said, and not only that, many individuals are visiting heaven from earth right now to go back with the testimony that people should be prepared because he's coming back shortly. You know, that's the message I'm hearing from many people, yeah. that he's coming back soon. But the thing that's so unusual is even children are carrying this message oh, back. Yeah. There was a young girl in Singapore that had been in one of our meetings where we were teaching your birthright is to see and go as a Christian. And she caught the revelation and began to be caught into paradise. And at that particular time, I was visiting, I saw my aunt at that time. I saw this young girl, this, she was eight years old, appear off to my left. She looked at me, smiled and waved, grabbed the hand of Jesus and it skipped off with him. Mm -hmm. A year later, Sid, I'm back in Singapore and I happened to have dinner with the grandmother and the, the, of this, and she, and she was there and she said, I saw you in heaven and you were talking to your aunt. Um, Wednesday morning, around 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning, um, God gave me a dream. And this dream had to do about the rapture. In the beginning of the dream, he showed me great disaster that's going to happen here on earth. He showed me people crying. He showed me buildings tumbling. He showed me weapons of mass destruction that are going to be used human against human, country against country. Just a massive massacre here on earth, something that the human race has never, ever, ever experienced before. And I was outside in the dream. And, you know, this was occurring. So you know how new ca newscasters are. They're out there and they're being nosy with their cameras. And they're filming all of this. And we're watching TV and everybody in their houses are watching TV with what's happening. And then all of a sudden someone says, look up at the sky. So I look up at the sky. And I see these round, metallic, bright things just zooming in the sky really fast. Faster than an airplane or whatever, just zooming very quickly. And all I could think of is uh, Ezekiel chapter 1, what Ezekiel experienced uh, that the Lord revealed to him, those round uh, sphere things. So once those sphere things started zooming, all of a sudden, I started feeling light in body. And I'm like, what's happening? And I'm just feeling light, and then all of a sudden, I started ascending to the heavens. And <laughs> I just seen people, you know, not everybody, obviously, but people ascending, ascending to the heavens. And it was just an awesome feeling, a feeling that I couldn't control. I know that we as humans, we try to want to control things. And I was trying to bring myself back down, but I couldn't. It was uncontrollable. Just ascending to the heavens. And, I'm, and we were ascending into outside of the earth's atmosphere to the point that when I looked down, I seen the whole world at my feet where I would see the stars and the stars were close enough to where I could touch them. And there I was in heaven. I seen some of the sisters here in the church. I seen Pat. <laughs> and we were just so overjoyed to see each other up there. Just a joy. I cannot describe to you the joy that was up there. Just to see each other. Just to be right next to each other. And then every time somebody would say, glory, glory to God, I seen... <laughs> Thousands and thousands of angels worshiping the Lord, <laughs> lifting up their hands, and every time we would praise God, these angels, a massive amount of angels worshiping along with us. But then at this time, this is where I was saddened at heart because I didn't see some of my loved ones there. Some of my loved ones that I thought would be there were not there. And then he revealed to me some of these people, which were my close relatives. And one of these close relatives, she was holding her daughter, just as an example. And then all of a sudden, her daughter disappeared, and all she had were her clothes in her arms. 
And she, like, she went crazy. She went ballistic. I don't know if any of you have ever dealt with psych patients. I know I have. <laughs> and they, you know, they, they are in a different mind state. But she was just acting like a psych patient. She went so crazy because her daughter disappeared in midair. And then all of a sudden, I felt a breath go all over my body. And when I looked at my arms, even my hair, it was flowing like fire. Like fire, my body was on fire. Not a fire that was burning my flesh, no. It was a different kind of fire. And then I heard a majestic voice telling me, preach my word. And when he said that, I got even more on fire. <laughs> preach my word. And he revealed to me names whom I needed to speak to about his salvation. And then from there, I woke up. And even while I was sitting up in bed, my body was on fire. I said, oh, Jesus, what's happening to me? <laughs> even my toes, when I would wiggle my toes and go like this to my hands, I was on fire. That I walked around my room and I was on fire. Now, if I could add this, if you would let me. <laughs> He's the boss, I need to ask him. <laughs> There was this urgency that I felt during that dream. An urgency. God is not coming soon. God is around the corner. He's not coming soon. Let me clarify this. He is around the corner. And the thing about the Lord is, throughout the whole Bible, that he doesn't surprise us. He forewarns us when something's going to happen. And he is forewarning us now. Because on that day, a lot of us who are not worshiping in spirit and in truth, who are not righteous and holy, guess what? You're not going. And you're going to be left behind, I'm telling you right now, to a world full of destruction. Where every corner you will go, there will be mourning, there will be crying. No one will be able to comfort you. And I know that the Lord revealed this to me not only for myself and for me to, you know, preach the word of God to my family, but I know he also, you know, wants to say this to you. And I do hope that you take this um, special visitation under consideration. And I do hope with all my heart that you do start becoming righteous in the hands of the Lord. Amen. God bless. God bless. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Cece told, told me in there when she was talking to me about that two countries will be involved in, she saw mass weapons of mass destruction against our country. And I think what the, why the Lord has given things like that is to show us to pray for our country. And our defense of our country is not our military might. It is our, it is God. Yes, it is. We need to pray for revival in this country. That God will sweep across this land and bring revival. It's overdue. We need it. We need to pray. All of us at noon every day pray as the Lord reminds you. Pray for revival. Do it in unison together. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. I then left this beautiful garden and went to the lovely street of gold and the Lord told me, Touch! Yes, it's pure gold. Go and tell my children that very soon they're going to walk on these streets of gold by the hand of the one who gives life. Oh, how great it is to walk in those streets of gold. After that, I saw a splendid throne surrounded by angels, archangels, and seraphs. They were continually praising God, the one who was on the throne, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth are filled with his glory. Amen. Time has come to lift up holy hands unto me and to praise me. At the same time, I saw the river of the water of life flowing from the throne. 
I also saw the tree of life, and at the other end I saw the rainbow and the river of crystal. Then I asked the Lord, Who is on this throne? He answered, It's my Father, the Lord of hosts. I told him, Can I see the Father? No, it's not yet time, the Lord answered. Even though I did not see the Father, the one who was on the throne was mighty. I saw thunder and flashes of lightning coming from the throne, and I heard praises. Jesus told me, Do you hear these praises? These are the praises of those who are redeemed. I saw seven angels, each one of them holding a golden bowl, and seven other angels, each holding a trumpet. Lord, who are these angels? The Lord answered, The seven bowls that the angels hold are filled with the wrath of God. They will soon be poured out, and when the trumpets sound, my church, those Christians who live according to the will of my Father, will be caught up. They will no longer be on earth during the great tribulation. Before the Antichrist manifests himself, this man of sin, my church will hear the last trumpet sound, and they will meet me in the air. I was there, dear friend, in front of a great throne, and I did not have any notion of time. A moment later, Jesus showed me how his church, the true believers, will be caught up. I saw this in vision, thousands of people disappearing. This happened worldwide, and TV and radio gave the news of the disappearance. Newspapers with big headlines in red also brought out the news. The Lord told me, the news will soon happen. If the judgments of my Father have not yet come upon the earth, it's because of the faithful Christians who really love me. After that, I saw the appearance of the man of sin. He was saying to the inhabitants of the earth, I'm bringing you peace and safety. And immediately people forgot the event that had just taken place. Jesus told me, Look carefully. I saw in the vision the seven angels with the seven bowls. Dear friend, what was happening was difficult to describe. I saw the angels pouring out the seven bowls of wrath on the earth. Trumpets started sounding. God was pouring out his judgments on the inhabitants of the earth and the whole country and whole countries disappeared. The Lord told me, "Look, all these people were part of my church and some were even pastors." Because I did not fully understand this, I asked the Lord, "How is it that your people have been left so numerous in the great tribulation? How is it that there are also pastors among them, those who preach your word?" Jesus answered, Yes, they had preached my word, but they were not living in accordance with my word. Then the Lord allowed me to see another multitude of pastors, he told me. Those pastors were not preaching my word as it is written. They thought that my word was not adapted to their century. They had too much favor towards those who were given a lot of tithes because they were more interested in material prosperity. Go and tell my servants that I am the one who called them, and that silver and gold belong to me, and I give them according to my greatness and glory. Tell them to preach my word as it is written. They are many, there are many, those who give another interpretation to my word. My word is my word, and no one can change it. It must be preached as it is written. There are many among my people who distort my word for their own profit. But he devotes his life now uh, to being a chaplain. He was a chaplain in the army for how many years? Almost 30 years. And, but the thing that intrigues me is when these visits to heaven started in 2008. Uh, explain. Well, in 2008, um, two things happened sort of simultaneously. First of all, God put it on my heart to pray for Israel every day. Every day I would get face down on the floor and repent for the things our nation had done to Israel and cry out for Shalom in Jerusalem and Shalom in Israel. And about that same time I went to a large revival. And one night I came home late from the revival and when I lay down in bed, my head hit the pillow, I was literally translated to heaven. I stood in uh, this place in heaven. Some people call it a throne room, but it was not really a room, it was huge but I was standing looking at the throne of Jesus and I was in so much awe of Jesus. I was literally um, paralyzed uh, with awe of Jesus. And as I looked at him, uh, just love flowed out of me and I just felt like this is, this is my Jesus. And I felt like I was just connecting with him in such a powerful way. And it was a life-changing experience for me. Well, you know, and then multitudes 
have been that when he teaches have had experiences of going to heaven. But why is it? I'm hearing, I didn't as a new believer, but I'm hearing so many people now, believers, are having visits to heaven. Why is that happening now? Well, Sid, I believe the reason it's happening now is that time is very short. In uh, the first letter of John, he says, uh, this is the last hour. And uh, I believe that uh, God is getting the bride ready and uh, he's calling people to heaven to give them the instructions, the preparations, the correction, uh, whatever discipline they may need to be ready. And I believe that we're at the time of the great end time harvest. And God is calling the harvesters to heaven to uh, train them and to uh, empower them and to gift them to go back into the harvest to win lost souls for the kingdom. I want to talk to you about I got to visit heaven and it changed my life. It marked me. I'll never be the same. It was about two years, a little over two years ago when I, uh, I actually left my body and went to heaven. I was at home and uh, this, an angel came into my room and suddenly I was in the spirit. I had just wakened up. It was about 10.30 in the morning. And as I, I, I woke up, uh, the I saw this angel, I left my body, and he took me, he said, take, I'm here to bring you to heaven. Well, I'm sent to, to bring you, and he said, take my hand, and we shot up out of the, 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 the house, at my house. And then as I looked down, I, it was like a Google map thing, you know? Yeah. And I, I suddenly, I, I ascend, I went higher and higher until finally I was out in space, you know? And then we were... It was like Star Trek, sort of. Then I looked forward, and we were going faster and faster, and it was just streaks of light, the, the stars. It was, you know. And we approached uh, uh, what looked very similar to Earth. It was a planet. We descended into this, this angel and I descended into this planet, and uh, it was just perfect. It looked a lot like Earth. And we, we came, and, and I... When we touched down, I saw mountains, I saw snow, I saw beautiful. I mean, it, it was like super high def. Everything was alive. And I was so grateful to be out of this body. Let me tell you something. This body, just living in this body is pain. Because we weren't, we were born again, but God had to leave us in this body. We're getting a new body. And that one, oh, it'll never get old. You don't have to put stuff on it. You, you know, you <laughs> don't have to... <laughs> do all that stuff. Um, and I was walking and we, we landed in like this valley and I'll tell you a few things I saw. One was uh, the most beautiful wildflowers I had ever seen, different colors. The, and there were colors that I had never seen before. The flower was singing. Every, nature sings there. And everything sings the praises of God. They're singing and everything has its unique voice. How do they sing? I don't know. <laughs> And, and the angel's sitting there, you know, waiting for me to, I'm going, wow, you know, we, and then we walked, and as we walked, it looked like we were going faster than you could walk, it just, we, and we passed by a, a waterfall, and the waterfall was like, first of all, I had, saw a rainbow in it, there was a sun, it was just like, like earth, except it was perfect, 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 perfect nature, and, and, and the rainbow had like 40 colors in it. And it was refracting off this waterfall. And the waterfall sounded like an ocean, sounded like a choir of angels and a full symphony orchestra singing at the same time. And then as I looked at it, it was shaped, we came in from above and it was shaped, it was like a Jewish star. And there were 12 tents uh, in the different points of the star in different places. And then there was a center there's a center pavilion and a table there. And, and it, it looked, it didn't look so big, but then when I, when I got there, I realized, wow, this thing is huge. It was, it was, you know, just thousands of people could sit under each. And then there was a flag. It was like a cone. I, I don't know. Uh, it was all white. And, and, and at the top of each of these pavilions, there was a flag. And the flag was for each tribe of Israel, the 12 tribes. And so I went in there and I saw the same, same very similar wedding, uh, outdoor wedding banquet. But the difference was there were no angels preparing it. It was all ready. 
everything was ready. The Lord turned to me and said, everything is now ready. Do you know what this is? I said, no, sir, I don't know what is this. He said, this is, this, the, basically he said, these are prepared for the 144,000 that are soon of your people from the 12 tribes. This is a special banquet that is prepared for them when they finish their work. And then all of a sudden I look in the center and the highest one was this, it was, it looked like solid diamonds. It was a beautiful robe, solid diamonds. It was suspended really high in the air. And I mean the highest of any of the mantles. And at first it was just bright. But then as I looked at it, it got brighter and brighter and brighter until every one of those diamonds was like a sun. It was blinding and I fell on my face and I, I couldn't look anymore. And then it went back down and in intensity, and it was just bright, shining, beautiful. Millions of diamonds look like, except it's prettier than a diamond. I don't know what it is. It's a stone of heaven. And, 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 and he said, do you know what this is? And I knew it had something to do with the Lord. I said, no, sir, what is it? It's, he said, this is the, the robe that I will wear when I return to the earth. For I shall be clothed, and he quoted me, the word of, I, the word, the word of God, I, I, it, and it will be dipped in blood. And, and the Lord, so he said, this is yet to come. I said, whoa. And then I wasn't there anymore. And he says, there's one more place I want you to see. But he said, you must tell my people that I'm coming soon. All is now ready. And he actually said to me, he said, all of heaven is on its feet. He says, we are ready to come. And then he said this to me, and I, at first it was very pleasant. He says, I don't know when it is. It could be at any moment. I said, surely you know. He says, only the Father knows. He said, all is now ready. Tell them that I'm coming and my reward is with me. So then finally, we stood in front of this beautiful, probably the most majestic of all of the buildings I had seen. And it really did. It looked like, it looked like a cathedral and it looked like the hall of Versailles, because it was long also, a long hallway. The, the, the doors opened and it was gothic, you know, it was a, they, they just opened. And we walked in and it was the most beautiful marble floor. It was, uh, and, and then my, it was like the Lord was leading me. I looked to the left and I saw on the left a small table that was in black velvet, and it was a gold table that was draped in black velvet, and on that table was a crown. And then I looked up, and the, the ceiling was arched like this. Right? I look up, and there are the most beautiful paintings of that person that I'd ever seen. The most beautiful painting. I mean, it was like Raphael and Michelangelo. They were painted. And he said some of these were painted by the great artists here. Some were painted by angels and some were painted by me. I painted some of them. I said, oh. And these paintings were very special because each one represented, it was like sometimes there was 10 great deeds that were done by that person. These were the crowns of the overcomers. This is the hall of crowns, he said. And on each side, there was a crown and on a table. And every 10 to 20 feet, there was another table. And then, and some of the crowns were not that elaborate. Some of them were just bursting with, with jewels, colored gemstones, jewels. Some of them just had solid diamonds that looked like diamonds that went up like in a flare. Like one of them was like eight feet. I mean, it looked just huge. Just that same kind of diamonds I saw on the, the robe of Jesus. And he said, do you know what these diamonds are? Of course, I said, no, sir. What are they? And he said, Dim diamonds, are, diamonds are nothing compared to these. These are like, wow. He said, they represent souls. These are soul winning, winners' crowns. They're different kinds of crowns. And he said, everything that you do in love is recorded and rewarded. About the end time. Jesus came to me and sat at my bedside. I want to talk with you like this today. I naturally realized it was about the end time. Is it about the end? I asked him. Yes. I am going to talk about the end time with you. In December, 2006, Jesus showed me rapture in the vision. 
When I was praying, I suddenly saw a blue sky. Then I saw people down on the land in small silhouette. Suddenly clouds started to rise up here and there simultaneously. At first, I was bewildered at the sight and soon realized its rapture. I looked at the scene in surprise, joy, and deep emotion. God told me to write down something after the scene. Underscore there will be huge famines and earthquakes before the Great Tribulation. The heaven and earth will become dark. Those who are looking for me will betray me. Men will pursue men, and women will pursue women to an extreme degree. Stay awake and keep praying. Listen to my words and practice them. Most of all, practice love. Love will overcome everything. Satan will be defeated by love. The servants who are awake and pray when I come will know when I will come and make preparations in advance. I will gather them in a place. Try to gather and pray. Those who stand alone will fall down. Fear me and make effort to pray. I will help you. I will help you by granting you great power and faith that are not like before. I will lift up my people without much tribulation. Underscore. Jesus also showed me another scene. I saw a soldier in a military cap on my right side. I thought he was a Chinese soldier. He was in war. I saw another scene on my left side. The army was in formation and shot cannons. They felt like missiles. The both sides were in a fierce confrontation. God recently told me something about China. He said China was being used for a mission for Israel and also used by the tool of Satan. In other words, the Chinese Christians will engage in the mission for Israel, while the Chinese government will be in a political confrontation with Israel. After watching the scene, Jesus told me, There will be an alliance formed between China and Arab Emirates at the end which is just right before rapture. They will fight in war against Israel. That is a sign of the end. John the Apostle came up to me, bent over, and kissed on my hand. I hugged him. You were in Patmos Island when writing the book of Revelation, right? I was happy with the heaven description at the end of the book and very much scared of the tribulation parts in the middle of it. When I first saw that, I was also very scared and trembling hard. Will those who received Holy Spirit go through the tribulation? Those who love Lord and those who are loved by Lord will suffer from hardship very lightly if they enter. They will not go through the seven-year great tribulation. Lord will calling them before the seven-year great tribulation. They will be ready as brides and spread the last gospel with the love given by Lord. Then, they will be lifted in a cloud simultaneously. Then what kind of people will be left in great tribulation? Will they include those who received Holy Spirit? There are few believers are left also in order to help others with God's permission. What kind of people will be left behind generally? They will include those who listened to God's voice and regarded it as a joke, or refused to believe it. They will be subject to severe, harsh, and deep suffering in the Great Tribulation. Martyrs During Tribulation I was having a conversation with believers. I felt a huge tremble. It grew more powerful until I could not endure it. All energy slipped out of my body, and Lord took me to heaven once again. Jesus said, I will show you the punishment that will be applied to those who are left behind during the tribulation. Soon I saw a scene before me. People were scratching here and there in the body with a painful facial expression. They were covered with black insects here and there, too. The insects got attached to their bodies and bit them painfully. They were scratching the itchy bites, which turned into reddish rashes, which would in turn make their faces swollen like balloons. Lord, will those who were chosen will be left behind and get punishment? All those who failed to be prepared as brides will be left behind and enter the tribulation. But I will provide them with solid faith to overcome the tribulation. In the end, they will get over the tribulation through the faith I gave them. Then will those who were not chosen by you go to hell? What do you think? What do you think I will do with them? I believe you will save even them, as well. Smiling at me, pleased, he said. I am full of love and mercy. 
I will grant my grace of salvation to those who listen to my voice and love me even though they are not chosen by me. I recalled the parable of wedding feast in Matthew 22, 1 14. The people who were invited didn't come. The king asked his servant to invite all in the street. Those who come later were not originally invited but had honor to be in the banquet. The next scene took place somewhere like a prison. The prison building was in a L shape. I was looking down at the yard in the air and saw prisoners standing in a circle. There was a man lying on a cross in the middle of people with his hands and feet tied. Evil men tried to saw him half in the stomach and kill him. The prisoners in the surrounding were also shaking with fear. I will make some of them grow in faith further and die martyrs. I will give them the glory of martyrdom. The faith of the left behind people will get stronger through the martyrdom. Lord would pour down faith for him to die martyr when the sawing began. He would then God opened up his spiritual eyes, when he shouted loud I see Lord standing in glory. Lord is waiting for me, standing by the throne. People who are left behind in the world, look at Lord who is trying to save and wait for us. Hallelujah. He then faced his death in the middle of huge joy and praise. There was a golden wagon in standby beside him already. The messengers of death would sit down with their arms and feet crossed far down the cross and merely look at the scene as if they got nothing to do. It was at that moment that the prisoners grew stronger in faith and started to encourage each other. Lord guides many martyrs to martyrdom for that. They will, of course, receive rewards for glory and nobility as I saw them at the place of martyrdom. Why are at they thrown in prison? They are in prison because they refuse to receive a mark on the forehead. Believers refused to receive a mark on the forehead. Does that mean it is 666? Not answering the question, he said. A microcomputer chip will be installed in their foreheads. Those who do not have the mark will have a difficult time eating, dressing, and drinking. However, those who were chosen by me will know it in advance and refuse to accept the mark, going through some difficult hardship regarding eating, dressing, and drinking. I was shown with a vision about people getting the mark on the foreheads. It looked like a device to scan barcodes at the counter and was smaller than it. The device beamed at someone's forehead, and the subject showed no indications on the surface. A little bit later, the evil people began to identify those who were not marked. Of those who refused to receive mark, some would escape to fields and mountains to avoid the evil men, while others would be captured and sent to prison. My children I chose will never be taken by the evil force, not even a single person. At that moment, I knelt down before him and praised him as follows. When God said, showing you the great and terrible last day, I didn't know what was about to happen. And then the whole sky was full of Jesus. The look on his face was love, compassion, but it was so final. How do you capture that look in destiny? And if anyone has ever wanted to know how they're going to see Jesus on the last day, up next. There was a beautiful grand piano, I remember, and we were all standing there. There were about 30 pastors and a missionary couple from India, and the music started playing. And I remember looking on the back of the, in the back of the sofa on the table, and there was a little Ark of the Covenant with the Israelites carrying the covenant. Mm -hmm. And as soon as the, I just shut my eyes, and all of a sudden was taken in a fast bullet elevator to heaven. And there I met God, and um, the place was so full of love and peace, and it was so magnificent, and the, it was about thousands and thousands of voltage of light, you know, so mm -hmm. it was hard for my eyes to adjust, but I knew where I was. And then he came right down to me from the throne, and he held my chin, and he said, Rivers, I love you. His red eyes were just blazing right through mine. We were nose to nose. And he said, uh, I never asked for the gift that I gave you. I never asked for it back. Mm. And I knew that he meant my music at that mm -hmm. time, my voice, mm -hmm. because the enemy had stolen. He had stolen yeah. so much from us. And so he wasn't reprimanding. He wasn't angry. I knew he understood, but um, uh, 
and he, of course, there's no anger in heaven, so I was just fully loved. And then all of a sudden, I look next to me. Well, first he shows me the throne, because I see around him, mm -hmm. and the throne of God is about 10,000 football fields, huge, the steps leading up to it, and he is that massive. This is not a small God that mm -hmm. we serve. We serve a mighty, powerful, mm -hmm. massive mm -hmm. God. And then I look next to me, and here's Jesus. And this mag he's so handsome in his, un his starched robes. And I often wonder, like, who does his laundry? He's always so <laughs> put together, you know? But this, I could see his, you know, I could Great. see his sandals and this in the sash. Uh -huh. And he said, I want to show you. And as far as I could see to the right and then to the left, he showed me millions upon millions of these. I say they're the heavenly beings, angelic beings, uh -huh. and millions of them were singing all in unison the most glorious sounds. Mm. So beautiful. I was the like tink. holy, holy, mm -hmm. holy. No words. I just heard the sounds. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Then I looked down and I was on the sea of glass, the golden sea, that pathway, and it made its, it went all the way through heaven. It was so beautiful. And then they took me, he took me into the altar the area where the altar was. And around the altar, this magnificent light show with mm -hmm. skyscraper beams. I mean, each beam is, was massive. And I looked up and each beam that was on this light show, trillions and trillions of sapphires. This one had rubies, this one had diamonds. Then this one, pearls as large as a house. I mean, it was mm. a magnificent light mm. show. And then he said, he knew, I, I did not want to leave. It's just all fear was gone, mm -hmm. and I wanted Perfect to stay love, forever. Perfect love. Mm -hmm. And then he must have read my mind. He said, it's time for you to go back. You cannot stay. It's not time for you to be here. Mm -hmm. So as I came to in that living room, in front of the couch, I was still standing, and my body was on fire. And the, it was like I was standing in ice cubes and on fire at the same time. Every cell was electrified in my body. The day before, the night before uh, that we're supposed to go pray for this pastor, um, I'm awakened in the middle of the night to this incredible screaming and screeching. I think that there are about a million people marching around this little hotel on the train line out of Helsinki. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking to myself as I come to, they, what would they want to kill the Teskies for? We're just here <laughs> to pray for the Lutheran pastor, <laughs> right? And so all of a sudden, before my eyes opened, God said, do not open your eyes. I'm showing you the great and terrible last day. And it was as my body went like a bag of cement, I was shocked that he would. I, I didn't know what was about to happen. And then all of a sudden, the blue, the azure blue sky that I see is incredible. It was a panoramic of the entire planet Earth. I heard but did not see the, the clouds rolling back. I mean, massive waves of clouds that roll back. And if anyone has ever wanted to know how they're going to see Jesus on the last day, he took up the entire sky. The whole sky was full mm -hmm. of Jesus. So he's like planted his feet on planet Earth. So, there is Michael and Gabriel, <laughs> the angel, standing next to him on either side. Mm -hmm. He is so magnificent, mm -hmm. but he is fierce. It was a moment. I, I, the look on his face was love, compassion, but mm -hmm. it was so final. How do you mm -hmm. capture that look in destiny? It's mm -hmm. a, it was the moment of the moment. And behind them, were stacked up millions of the warring angels. They are the most magnificent golden angels. Their wings, they're the essence of life in the every cell and their being. I mean, it was just shimmering. Their wings were just kind of moving and they were focused totally on commander in chief. Mm. Like with the command, they would do anything. Mm. As then, as they appear, the whole earth goes silent. Have you ever thought about whole planet Earth? Not one bird, I didn't, they weren't chirping, nothing. All I could hear was humanity just breathing 
and it was heavy breathing. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, bam, 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 I heard billions of knees hit the ground all over planet Earth. So my mind, I felt like every it was exploding with the sounds. Every and the, knee every shall bow. Every, every knee shall confess. bow. Yeah. And it was like dominoes. It was a ripple effect that Jesus. went all over the planet. Mm. And um, oh, thank you, Lord. they're down. And then three times, all of humanity says Jesus three times. And the ripple effect, even the sound of our breath to Jesus and all the angels, it was like a nuclear fallout, you know, the ripple, or even if you drop a stone in a pond and how it goes. And as Jesus hits them, they all kind of like, they just come back with the sound. Mm -hmm. And then we all say Jesus again, and then Jesus. And then the most frightening thing, everyone that had spit, that had mocked, had hated him, the had vileness, reje had, rejected. had rejected him. I felt so helpless. I was totally helpless mm. for them because in their minds, I could hear the death knell. They were screaming and screeching. And then I wondered, was that what I had heard when I was awakened mm -hmm. at that sound, that first sound that night? And I laid there, I was released from the vision and I laid there, it must have been an hour, but I, before I like just, I, I just looked over to the wall and I could see, you know, it said 3 a.m. And then I looked at my husband like very slowly. That's all I could move my eyes and my face. And I laid there and my question to myself was, or to God was, why me? Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. This is too much. I mean, but I was so grateful that in my whole life, that was really, of all the encounters, that changed everything in my life. Mm -hmm. I want the people that are watching that they must, as the grandparents and the parents of these little ones who will see the terrible, the great and terrible last day, we may not tarry, but they will see it and they will have to be strong. So I believe that the kingdom of God must rise up. You must come out of the pews. You've got to stop being dead on arrival. We are not in the hospital. We are a mighty army and we have got to withstand. Mm -hmm. And the days it says in Revelations and in Daniel and Matthew, the end times will be so great mm -hmm. that even the followers of Jesus yes. will give up hope. So this is a hopeful thing for the kingdom of God, but it is, I mean. It's also a clarion call. Yes, yes. a clarion call. I mean, for people who don't know the Lord, maybe you're watching yes. today yeah. and you haven't invited Jesus into your heart and life. You haven't asked him to forgive you of your sins. The Bible says for all have sinned. Yeah and come short of the glory of God. But also says in John, if we confess our sins, yes. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know that for you and I, because I've, I've been taken to heaven several times, I've I gone to the wedding place. In order for you to come there, Jesus had to bring you there into that wedding place. And you have to be invited there too. Thank you, Lord. Remember, remember that revelation the Lord gave me where I went to that room where Jesus was. And one of the angels said, where are you going? You cannot go in there. And I heard when Jesus said to the angel, he can come. Like he'd been invited. You have to be invited in order for you to come. And the Lord is inviting everyone to come. But how many have taken him serious in the invitation? And are preparing, are trimming the lamp, getting ready to meet the Lord. How many are getting ready? And not keeping enough oil on the lamp so when he comes. That's your relationship with God. God will give you that oil for you to have if you continue to seek him. If you continue to come to him. The only sad thing, you know, someone shared with me, I believe it was today or yesterday, a testimony that he saw the gate of heaven shut, and so people could not come in. Someone shared this with me. I don't know if it was a dream or someone shared this with me. It was I don't know if it was a sister or brother. He said, I saw the, the doors of heaven being shut, and I saw people that could not come in. They could not come in. They would turn, like, they would turn away because the door was shut, and it was told to this person, soon, soon. 
the door will be shut. That's all. It was a brother, a brother, yes. It was told to him to prepare. And it was said to him, soon, soon, he, he saw this huge door that people could come through into to the wedding celebration. And he heard the voice that said to him, soon, soon, the door is going to be shut. And no one can come in no more. It's in the word. It's in the word. And he, he said he looked at, him, at all the people that were outside that could not come in. And he, he heard how loud and powerful it was when the door was shut. He knew no one could open that door but God. That's how powerful the doors are, he said. He says, Elby, you couldn't even imagine how tall those doors are. And how, I never seen so ha such a heavy doors. And I knew no one can open the door by God. I just knew it. I had that knowledge right there, that no one can open those doors. And I saw when they were shot, boom. And he heard the voice, soon the door is going to be shut. There were still people coming in until the door was shut. And he said he woke up crying from that revelation of the Lord, that the door was shut. I said, oh, wow. I, I'm glad when people, when people share things like this, man, I, I get real joy and happy because then I can share it with other people. The door is going to be shut because it's what the Lord is saying to me. And when I get these confirmation of people that get these revelation, I, I rejoice for people that understand this is this is not my own uh, my own making. Hallelujah. That's another word I heard that the time of grace will be over. Brother Body even reminded me this early on the phone that the Lord has said this to me. Um when was it? Sunday? Sunday. I heard the Lord says to me, Time it's over. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, he just confirmed it to me. Time is over, the Lord says to me. And the Lord just also confirmed to me, yes, the door will be shut. He just he just confirmed it to me. He said, yes, the door will be shut. Time is over. He just confirmed that to me and that the door will be shut too. He just confirmed to me. I still feel his anointing as he spoke to me. Brothers and sisters, this is it. I'm telling you, this is it. And when he said this to me on Sunday, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't expecting that from the Lord, and he just spoke that to me, and I had to say it because he was having me say it. Hallelujah! Glory be to the Lord. The door will be shut. The door will be shut, and time is over. I don't know how much time we have. I just don't know. I just don't know. I hear God. I obey God. We see God, and that's it. Hallelujah. We're not trying to figure out time. The Lord told me to stop trying to figure out time. He said that to me back in April 2014. Stop figuring out time, my son. It is not for you or anyone to know, he says. It is not for you or anyone to know, but only God. And that's it. We don't need to try to figure out time. We just tell the Lord, thank you, Lord. He just confirmed it to me. We just say the Lord is coming. The Lord is coming, and that's it. For people to prepare, he's coming soon. That's what his word said. That's what we say. He's coming soon. Thank you, Lord. We just need to be ready. Ready, brothers and sisters. Yes, um, brothers and sisters, I would like to start off um, by letting, um, by just introducing, um, I mean, what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to be mainly talking about, which is going to be about being ready and the times we're in and and about the transformation, as Brother Aaron said, time is really up, and things really are about to happen. Um, I'd like to start off with Galatians 2.20, where it says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Um, this, we need to... We need to grasp this, this scripture to the fullness. We need to lift this. This has to be a reality in our lives. Because when this scripture is fulfilled to the full in our hearts, we have the complete Holy Spirit. What, what happens is the 
presence of God becomes one with us because we reject every single thing about ourselves because it is not us that, 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 that we strive to please. We don't think of pleasing our flesh. We don't think of, 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 of pleasing our, our brothers and our sisters, but we only think of pleasing God because we keep hearing this every single day. We know that is what we're supposed to do. We know that we're supposed to be focusing on pleasing God. We know that we're supposed to be focusing on pleasing the Holy Spirit, but sometimes we don't always do that. And we have to be really careful now because there's a lot of deceiving spirits because, you know, the Word of God says, you know, there's going to be a time the Lord is going to release a delusion, a lie to deceive many people. And right now, so many people are believing that lie and they're trying to even corrupt God's people who believe the truth. There's so much life going on about the world and about, about the, the times we're in and, you know, about so many theories, so many um, 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 doctrines of, of demons and of lies that are coming in to deceive people. So we have to be careful. But what I just really wanted to let everyone know is, is, is just how to really fulfill the scripture in Galatians 2, you know, fulfilling it by letting God really be the one that lives through you is is, is a gradual process because the Word of God says, you know, work out your salvation in fear and trembling. It's a daily gradual process. And you have to learn every single day to die to your flesh and to always put God's Holy Spirit first. And as you, as you keep building up in that, there might be times when you might fall. There might be times when you might make mistakes. But, but, but it's not the end. When you make a mistake, it's not the end. We all make mistakes. There's, there's sins in all. There's sin, there's sin in my heart. There's sin in everyone's heart because we're not perfect yet. There's sins in all of our heart. But when, when you fall, do not be discouraged. Don't let that be, be, be the end of your story. Don't let that discourage you because Jesus' blood is still at work. And when you call upon that name, you know, the mention of the name of Jesus, you know, you know, you will be saved. Whosoever shall call on that name will be saved. When you call upon that name, Jesus will faithfully cleanse you and forgive you. And you're going to be cleansed and you're going to make everything new. And as long as you love the Lord, as long as you keep fighting for him, the Bible says that all things work together to the good of those that love God. If you really do love him, he will use every, he's going to use everything to bring glory to his name. Even the most terrible, horrendous sins and abominations you commit in your life, God will use it to bring great glory to his name. And, you know, the laws that were given to us, these, these laws have been fulfilled by Jesus. And, and, you know, the fullness of God's laws and God's instructions have to, be com- have to be completely living in our hearts. We have to have the fullness of God's instructions. We have to have it in us. And that is Jesus. When the Lord shows us that there's something wrong, we have to be grateful. And we have to praise him and accept whatever correction he gives us and repent from it. Because... Time is absolutely over. You're not allowed God to cleanse you to see that things are, things are not okay. You need to prepare. You need to get ready to come out of this world because time is absolutely over. The Lord is showing, he's showing his people. He's been showing me this. Time is up every single time I pray every single day now. It's like I keep feeling this pressing in my heart that something is coming. And I know it is. And I know it's, it's, it's a revival. And I know it's the, it's the disasters. I know the transformation. And it keeps hitting it in my heart. It keeps, it keeps coming to me. Like I keep feeling this pressing ur- urgency. Like I know that something is about to happen. And I know that is the great events that are to come. And that is the coming of our Lord Jesus. And before that, there are things that will happen, such as, you know, the great, asteroid that's going to hit the tsunami, the great earthquake, um, the three days of darkness. Um, um, but, but there's going to be a lot, you know, a lot of horrible things, the, the, the missile explosions, the wars, a lot of all those terrible things that, that Jesus said will come. They are coming. But in the midst of all that, so many wonderful, glorious things about to, are about to happen. Everything is about to change. Like, everything is, is changing now. The Lord told me last year, change, and everything is changing. Like, physic- spiritual things are becoming physical so, so strong, and you're going to be shining. The glory of God is going to rise upon you so mightily. The earth was dark and sin, wretch and sin. And what happened was I saw the revival coming. I saw the glory. It looked like a white sun, but everything seemed silent. And before they least expected it, it just hit. And that's how it's going to be. It's going to be so sudden and so quick. 
and some people will be sleeping, but then they're going to know when these things are. They're going to they're gonna be so happy. They're going to wake up from their beds with tears of joy because they're going to see angels in their room. They're going to see their body beginning to change. They're going to see themselves in heaven. They're going to be hearing God in ways they've never imagined. People are going to be so amazed when they see what God is about to do. And they're just going to be weeping just because of the joy that, that they're experiencing. It's going to be like never before. And this is really coming, but the Lord showed me that it's, it's like he's keeping it. It's, it's like it's, it's right now a lot of people don't see a lot of things that are going on, but the Lord showed me that it's, you know, he, he's coming like a thief. Thieves come in silence, and the Lord is not a thief, but he, he chose to explain things like that. He's going to come like a thief because if, you, because, if, because if we really love him, we're going to be ready whatever time he comes. It won't matter. What day, what hour, what year? If we really love Jesus, He's gonna come. What He's gonna? He's, we're gonna be ready, whatever time He comes. And He's just watching us, and it's gonna be quick and very sudden. 